Come on, let me do my... Hello, everybody. It's Friday night. Welcome to Polyterology. I'm Colleen Pearl, the cool crone, and I'm here with four of my very good friends and who happen to be amazing psychics. And we are here to give you divination pleasure. This is what we're doing. Okay, so I'm just going to introduce everybody and let everyone tell you what's going on on their channel. And I'm going uh, to start with Gerald uh, Tarot Stash. Thank you. I'm Gerald Tarot Stash. The easiest thing to do is to like and subscribe to my channel because I've got lots of stuff coming up, including an amazing show on Tuesday evening with Colleen, the cool crone, where we're doing readings for readers. So that's a new show I'm starting. So please, uh, please join us. Yes. And Val, why don't you tell us what's going on with you? I'm just doing a med meditation class tomorrow morning. There's still time to join uh, and uh, going forward with the channeling class. I also have another channeling class coming up if you want to join that. And uh, if you go to dragonfirecrystals.store, you'll be able to see what those classes are. Other than that, my usual shows and um, tomorrow is a special event. We're having the real psychics of YouTube. Mm -hmm. So tomorrow, you at four o'clock Pacific, seven Eastern, you will not want to miss that. Uh, the cool crone has um, created this enticing show. So you will want to watch that. <laughs> yes, maybe yeah. we'll see, maybe we'll see a promo for it later. Maybe. Stay tuned. Okay. And Cleo, what's going on with you? Well, I'm just so excited about tomorrow's show. I hope you're able to make it. It's your show. It's the, uh, you know, the real psychics of YouTube. And we've been talking about this for a month. So, hey, everybody better show up. It should be fun and it should be interesting. And on uh, Monday, I've got the Mystic Four. Nice. Yes. Ooh. Very nice. Okay. And that's it? Yeah, that's good enough for now. <laughs> and Sherry, Voices from the Swamp, welcome back to the East. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, for you. A very eventful trip. Um, tomorrow night is Night Owl Slumber Party at 11 p.m. Central. Nice. And we will cover the trip and all the wild things that happened and all the near misses that we went through that just even my son was like, okay, somebody's looking out for us. <laughs> Yeah. Like, yeah, you think? <laughs> um, and then Sunday is, um, I think it's Juno. On it's Sunday is Juno, Fortunes and Flows. And then Monday is Draining the Swamp with Mel Dor, our Aloha shirt psychic. And I think Aiden is going to join us uh, Monday night. Very um, nice. Because Arthur is going to be with Marina Monday night. Oh. We share him. I get the first Monday of the month, and she gets the last Monday of the month when we do our shows. <laughs> so we just split Arthur in two and share him. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I'm not gonna, <laughs> that I don't even know what to say to that, but okay. Yeah, I don't either, but whatever. Okay, so um, do we, we have a few questions from the chat. What and about you? What about, what about you? Me? Oh, what about me? Um, yeah, so we're having the Real Psychics of YouTube uh, tomorrow night. I'm very excited about that. That's going to be really fun. And, you know, you just got to tune in and see what's happening with that because it's going to be a good okay. show. Um, let's see. What else? Um, on Tuesday, I'm doing readings, readings for readers with you. And... Um, yeah. And oh, oh, and tonight after the show tonight, I'm going to do another show with uh, Deanne Shield Maiden and uh, Tea Time for Tanya. And we're going to be talking about the witch trials, which 
I don't think I'm an Ooh. expert in witch trials, so I don't know what I'm going to really contribute, but I'll, I'm sure I'll think of something to say. But <laughs> and so I'm looking forward to that. So here we are. It is April. We are on the verge or the eve of the Jupiter Uranus conjunction this weekend, which is um, destined to be kind of a big deal for everybody. So we'll see what happens after this weekend. We had the eclipse or a pair of eclipses. Um, now we have this conjunction, which is going to also involve some of the same planets that were with the eclipse. So, you know, popcorn is going to pop, you know, there's going to be a lot of stuff happening. And um, yeah. I know that Mr. T has been feeling all of that happening. So it's definitely going to impact him. Um, so without any more, you know, bejabbering, let's get into some questions. So we have, um, okay, we'll take this first one from A-Dub. Um, I'll go ahead and put it up on the screen. So Sloan Bella says, if psychics say for entertainment purposes only, then they don't stand by what they say. She also says you can still be sued even with that. Thoughts? I don't know who Sloan Bella is, but the reason that people need to say for entertainment purposes only is a legal reason. Um, because in many states, divination, fortune telling, even astrology is basically illegal unless you say that it is for entertainment purposes only. Yes. Like for tax purposes, when you are even a carnival worker, anybody that does anything that um, has, you know, involvement with fortune tellers, psychics, astrologers, you know, re not Reiki, that's healing, but you know, anything where you're reading somebody, um, you have to register your in your for your taxes as an entertainer. That's that's the way you register. That's the way you set up your business. It's not so it is legal. So I disagree that you can be sued after that. I mean, someone can try to sue you if you took advantage of them, like someone saying, I'm going to um remove this curse for you, please give me $5,000 for all the candles and oils, you know, then maybe you're taking advantage of the person. So that aspect of it, you can be sued for, but the actual, just giving a reading for somebody, but saying, Hey, I'm an entertainer and this is just for entertainment purposes only. I really doubt that the suit would go anywhere. I mean, anybody can sue for anything. You can't really stop people from doing that, but I don't think they'd win. So those are my thoughts. And there you have it. Anybody else? I think he's doing quite nicely. So oh. I agree. All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And it, okay, there we go. All right. So let's see. Let's go to uh, Rose's question. Will the judge remove reporters from the hallway and stop 45's word salad there? That is a good question. Let's read on that. I get that he won't, he won't do that, that he'll let the reporters go ahead and be there and let Trump go ahead. And because Trump's already making such a big deal about the gag orders and that, you know, the judge won't let him do anything, which is absolutely not true. And then the thing about, well, I don't get to go to my son's graduation. It's all BS. It all depends. You know, the judge didn't say absolutely not. You can't do that. What the judge says is you need to appear in court for your trial. And if you don't, you could go to jail. But, you know, they don't know what the timing is going to be. So if they get done soon enough to let him go to his son's graduation, they will. Also, the judge is not opposed to giving him time off for that day or that morning or afternoon, whatever it is, to go to his son's graduation. But, you know, it just it depends on where they're at with the case. But, uh, you know, I think he's going to let the uh, the reporters stay there. And, uh, you know, Trump, <laughs> Trump keeps coming out and just saying stupid, ridiculous things. And finally, the general media is finally getting on board with this and letting us know that every, you know, they let us know when Trump is BSing everybody, which is almost every time he opens his mouth. So. You know, as long as the reporters continue to report correctly, 
I don't think the judge has a problem with it. I, I have to agree 100%, and I have them. Uh, the judge is going to just let him you do responsibility. Here I have him doing his lies out in the hallway. It, it's not about the reporters being there. It's what's coming out of his mouth, lies, because he has to take responsibility for what comes out of his mouth. But you know what? He's not going to be able to stop himself from his normal spiel. And here's the celebration card of all of us going, oh, they finally did something about it. Because yes. I think he will end up in jail. I feel like he will. And I think he wants to in some way, even though he tweeted, uh, X'd, whatever, he, whatever platform he has, true social, I'm not going to be arrested. I'm not going to be arrested. Well, yeah, you are. Because the, he, he the universe, does, he does the universe doesn't hear not. They just hear, I'm going to be arrested. I'm going to be arrested. Right. He, he wants to be arrested because he wants the publicity and he wants to be the martyr. The yeah. uh, only thing is, is that whole, that whole line of thinking will just uh, backfire on him. Correct. Okay. Who else is ready? Um, <laughs> so well, I think he's thinking he's a poet. Every time he walks out there and the press is all out there, He's just spewing all this nonsense because he thinks he sounds so intelligent, which, of course, makes him feel like he's in this happy place with rainbows and unicorns and all that good stuff. What he's actually doing is he's he's standing in the fire and doesn't even realize he's getting burnt to the crisp from it. And as Val was saying, Oh, the star. We are all so very happy that he's doing this because it's good for us. So there you go. Okay. I'm actually going to be the differing opinion here because the question is, is will the judge remove the reporters from the hallway? I got a yes. However, it's not going to be an immediate thing. It's uh, it's going to, uh, you know, I got my yes with the seven of pentacles. So it's going to show up, but it's not quite yet going to happen. And the other cards are about um, someone being stupid, someone who is saying things that they shouldn't say. And um, it's when that gets in the way of allowing things to move forward, the judge is going to go, nope, you're out. You're interfering with uh, with the uh, processes and and the procedures, so you're done. You know, I think you're you might be onto something about will they take them out of the hallway? They might take them out of the hallway, but they'll they'll still be reporters outside of the courtroom. So that's what I'm feeling uh, that that could happen that way to remove to remove these people out of the maybe take them out of the building altogether. But still, they're going to be on the outside, and Trump doesn't care, just as long as there's somebody there with a microphone <laughs> and a camera taking his picture so he can spew his false narratives about what's going on. I, You know, I think that they can't remove the reporters because it's really, I don't know if it's First Amendment issue, I don't know what it is, but it's freedom of the press where right. they have to be able to be able to, um, to to produce information that comes from a trial or something and tell the public it's their job. So in that way, it would be very hard to remove them because well, that's could, like, they, could they remove them from the building and still have reporters? Uh, you know, I don't think so. It's almost like that might be like a step of pulling their access because actually they should be allowed in the courtroom. Because they're, it's the free press allowed in the courtroom, allowed to sit in, allowed to know to report what they hear, not what they hear from Trump, but what they hear in the the actual trial itself, and that's part of uh, the free press. So I don't know about that. Yeah, yeah. What, they, what they can't take into the courtroom is like a cell phone to record it, yeah. either either audio or video. They won't allow that in New York. Um, yeah. In other states, they might, but um, I agree with Val. I mean, they're the they're the fourth estate. You know, that's that's part of our the structure and foundation of our rights in in this country is the right mm -hmm. to disagree with the authorities. And one way that we know 
that we want to disagree is by hearing what the authorities are doing and that's the press so it's yeah. built it's baked in that we allow uh journalism that's baked in yeah. um, i think that i think that judge marshan is a is a wily goat because i think that he has kind of a plan it's not <laughs> It's not an accident that he said, you know, yeah, okay, we're going to deal with your stupid gag stuff, you know, after we pick the jury, because he wants to keep the ball rolling. But also, perhaps he just wants Trump to really hang himself. Now, one thing I heard some of the legal pundits saying is, well, he's got to warn him. He can't just bring the hammer down because they can, they can, you know, challenge that, that it's not fair or whatever. And I'm thinking... I don't know. Marshawn's very wily and he has made note of all the other cases where he's had to be gagged. He's used those gag orders kind of as a precedent for his own gag order. So I I think that he's kind of letting Trump hang himself. I have to agree 100% with you because when I was throwing those cards, I was vi seeing the vision of him laying the trap for him, not a trap per se, because he's just going to let himself hang himself. Mm -hmm. It is just, he's letting his, his Trump do his regular thing, but mm -hmm. it is almost his like laying a trap for him to be yeah. caught up, yeah. to be trapped by a, his own personality. Yeah. And flaws. Yes. He's oh. pulling the chair right up under the uh, cross beam and laying the rope nicely across it. You know, he's yes. really saying, here you go. Here, here's all the ammo that you need. Um, because I see that at some point, Trump is going to be very, very upset. The reporters, though, I think will stay pretty much in the hallway, but he might also take the step of just tightening the gag order even further and then also letting Trump kind of hang himself. But I see that, you know, Juan Marchand is now the king of swords. You know, he is he's calling the tune. And uh, Trump is a bad dancer to the tune. <laughs> <laughs> bad and smelly one too. <laughs> yeah, 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 messy and smelly. Okay, that was good. Um, all right, so what do we have here? Uh, we'll take that one down and we'll get rid of these ones that we talked about. And now we have Colleen. Okay, Colleen, let's see. Moses Mike now has three people asking for his removal. Ah, so do we think that he's going to be removed imminently or what will happen? Well, now he's pulling a new trick. Um, now he's saying that he is going to let them have the money. The only thing is, it almost looks like it's too late. I mean, it's still, you know, it's great that they're finally coming up with some money, but it, they've wasted, I, what have they wasted six months, you know, and they've allowed so much damage because, because Ukraine didn't have the money. They didn't have the ammunition. They didn't have the, whatever it was they needed. Um, and other countries have stepped in and tried to help, but not as much. I, I don't know if it's as much as the United States, but, I just think that uh, he's acting like, okay, I know I'm putting my job at risk by doing this, but now I think we should give him the money. And I'm like, well, Yahoo. I mean, I'm glad that's happening, but I'm not that glad about it because it should have happened months ago. So as far as him, his removal, my, I think it is, I think it's coming. I think we've all seen that coming eventually here within and probably by summertime if not sooner that's my that's my feeling that's what i'm being told okay anybody else ready i got the um will be removed in august is what i got so it's coming and uh lots of lots of people are deciding how they're going how they want to interact which team they're on because everything is mercurial. Um, but uh, yeah, I definitely have, um, I, I have August. So 
Does that, if he's there till August, does that mean he will have been speaker longer than Kevin McCarthy? I don't know. I'm going to find out. Go ahead. Who's ever ready can go. Okay. Well, I drew the devil because as they say, the devil's in the details. Um, I think that Moses Mike is, is, the feeling I'm getting is that he's really pushing the MAGA right, right? Mm -hmm. Followed by the eight of chalices. So whatever it is he's doing, it's not going to be very successful, um, especially with this deck. That's how they spell this card out. Um, he's, I, I feel like, it could be i'm i'm getting august myself um or september because then i got the nine of swords so he's going to be under the gun and while he's giving in to the what the democrats want what biden wants he's pissing off more and more and more of the republicans even the more moderate ones who understand why he's doing what he's doing because their job is to govern, not to walk around and have hissy fits all day long. So I think, yeah, we're looking at August or September. And uh, and I think Jeffries will be, be right there to take his place because that's what I had a vision about it a couple of months ago. I saw Jeffries in before the election. <laughs> And just to, just a short thing here, pulled the devil card. And uh, really, here's a compassionate feeling. Uh, th this is like the Democrats, and here's the devil card. And next to the devil card is money. <laughs> so you're really um, dealing with someone who is thinking about how they can walk the line between their own people the far right and defend what they're doing and um with effort and being able to come home in celebration but what's going to happen and i felt april very strong or um august rather very strongly when i saw that king of pentacles this felt like an eight to me an eight type kind of season that he is going to find out that his altruism in the Mike, Mo, Moses Mike way, his altruism is not going to pan out for him in some way. But we'll just have to see how that goes because here's a here's a little messenger coming to tell him something, give him a love tap, and it may be the love tap to leave. I don't know. We'll yeah. See. So everybody else read already? I think so. Okay, so Gerald, what, did you read? I did. Yeah, he did. Okay. So what I what I got is that you know he is learning how to do his job. He is learning it. You know, finally, um, not finally. I mean, he was just he learned it fairly quickly, but he's working very hard, especially behind the scenes, because now he gets it. Now he gets how all of the things work together, how it all meshes together. Mm -hmm how the team really works. And you notice that he's very often siding with the Democrats. Cause you know, as a leader, you want action, right? You want to show I'm doing something right. You want that yeah. feeling. Yeah. So <laughs> he's very conflicted on the one hand. He just, he does, does not, he's very just disillusioned with Trump, with the whole action of the Republican party, with what their supposed ideals are. And, if you hear him spouting those religious things or referring to himself as Moses, he knows he's lying. He knows it, but he doesn't know what else to say. He doesn't have a new script to replace the old one, but he's very, very conflicted. I mean, I, I heard that he had um, one of his sons is actually in the armed forces. I don't know what area. And that one of the things that he's very worried about is him being put on the ground, you know, and being sent to war. He's very worried about that. Yeah. But at the same time, I hear that he's very, he has changed his mind about the money for Ukraine, 
and he wants all of this stuff to go forward. So this is a man who is really kind of torn up inside, but also excited about what he's doing. Now, I do see, though, he's probably going to have a challenge pretty quick here, probably within the next week or two, and he's going to survive. He's going to survive that challenge. He's going to get through it somehow, probably with the Democrats' help. And that bill is also going to get through. And so he's going to have, you know, walking down the hallway, people are going to be shooting daggers in his back with their eyes, but he's going to survive. So yeah. perhaps you guys are all right about August is the time. And I did check. He was elected on October 25th. So if he lasts until August 25th, he will surpass Kevin McCarthy for his uh, run in, as speaker. That is closely related to plucky heroin. Ask him to pop this up. Okay. Will funding occur for Ukraine aid before Moses Mike gets jettisoned? And I think you answered that. Yeah, I think oh, it, it will. That it, it's imminent. I, I feel it coming. I feel it. I I felt so strongly about it that I didn't even feel we needed to read about it. But yeah. I mean, we can read about it if you want to. No, I it. I just wanted to put that up because you okay. had already touched on it. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. Now the aid packages, though, I I think they're all lumped together, right? I think they're all. Um, let's see. Uh, funding for Ukraine. What it, what does the New York Times say here? Yeah, it's tied together with Israel, and then there's another. Uh, is it Taiwan? That's the other country, I think, that needs aid at this point. And then the border. No, no, that that this is a different package. This is uh, this package is aid just for the earthquake. No, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe I don't know. Other U.S. allies, anyway. Mm -hmm. um, it says uh, John Johnson is pushing ahead on foreign aid bill, uh, teeing up a weekend vote, and it passed the first round of voting. So it's kind of on its way, unless he's just a terrible counter, unless he just doesn't know how to count any votes at all, which is possible. He's new at the game. So who knows? But there's, um, there's people in chat who are saying multiple uh, bills, four, three or four. Oh, yeah. okay. That's why it's so confusing. Yeah. Oh. Oh. And there okay. was a vote today, apparently. Oh. Yeah. And it went, so that was the first round that went through. Okay. Um, so, I guess what we could read on is, uh, huh? Will will the package go through next week, or will it take longer? Or when will this package go through? Because yeah, Ukraine is really on pins and needles. They had articles about that too. They're really like, oh, we need this. Well, it'll go through rather fast as long as it, uh, as long as the Senate can can concur that this is what they want. You know, yeah. it, it depends on how the bill is written, but I, it, they're going to do their best to try to get it through. And what's the question exactly? Will it go through next week or will it take longer to get through? Gotcha. Damn it. I got movement. They're honing it, honing the bill, getting it done and movement with the chariot so i feel like it's going to happen quickly but then the confusing thing is <laughs> waiting for your harvest to come in so i don't know if that's moving it through to the senate and sitting there and waiting um but it will i don't think it's going to be that too much longer i think well it's and good. lady leo says the vote today was just whether to bring aid packages to a vote Oh, they, they yeah. Were, yeah, yeah, and they said yes, they would. Yes, they will. Okay. Well, this looks pretty promising. The cards that I got, uh, the Four of Swords, laying a foundation for war. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's swords or war, right? Um, King of Cups, Biden's on board with it. He's happy about it. Then we got the Prince of Swords. I guess that would be Mikey, huh? My, looks little, like him. Little, <laughs> him. Prince of sorts. It does look like him. And 
Then we have Ten of Pentacles. That's a big shit ton load of money, you know. So we got that. And the Ace of Cups. Everybody's happy. Except for those three magas in Congress that don't know how to be happy. But at that, yeah, so I think it's going to go through next week. I think they're going to get their aid. And everybody's mm -hmm. going to be able to sleep a little better in Ukraine. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. Well, I pulled uh, St. Genevieve, which is uh, the Queen of Staffs. So we're, we're looking at, at um, stuff that can very well be worked out. You know, everything kind of worked out for the best. And I think that would indicate fairly fast uh, result, But then I followed it up with St. Anthony, which is the Knight of Staffs. And it's, uh, that could be a little volatile. So there might be some fighting going on in the house over this, especially mm -hmm. since Moses Mike is, is going to be going against his party with what he's pushing through. Um, but it ends with the six of chalices and they're having a grand old time. So I think it's all going to work out fairly well and fairly quickly is what I'm picking up from it. That's, that's what I'm feeling. So by next week, maybe the week after, I think is very possible. Yeah. I'm thinking eight days. They're gonna they're gonna have to get through eight days of stuff in order to for it to pass. Mm. So okay. Okay. All right. So let's see here. I don't know quite well, let's read on this. I don't I don't know quite what to make of this, but if you hadn't heard, there was a man who lit himself on fire in the park across the street from the courthouse um, in some kind of a protest against Trump's case. And he said Biden and Trump were working together. Oh, yeah. I'd well, like I, to don't, I, didn't, I did not hear that. I did not hear I, that it had anything to do with Trump's case. I think this guy came up from Florida. He's a, a conspiracy kind of guy. He believes in a lot of conspiracies. He's obviously off his rocker, anybody that lights himself on fire. And I don't, you know, I, I don't even, I think he just wanted to be in front of that, that courtroom, you know, to make his thing. But um, I, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't, he might've said Biden and Trump are working together. I don't even know what the hell that means. The guy was a complete nutcase. Um, and, you know, I feel badly that somebody is so, deranged that they think that they will make a point by starting themselves on fire. And he is currently in the hospital with uh, a lot of burns. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's going to impact anyone right. because it, it, it favors neither side. Right. It's, it's of no um, impact except that it's a tragedy that a human being was that mentally ill and you didn't get help. Yeah. In some way. Yeah. Anybody else? I don't have anything to add. I just think it's sad that somebody did this. It's very yeah. sad. Same, same, same. Very sad. Sherry, you have anything? Yeah. Um, well, I, I do vomit. So I'm thinking it's just, just kind of a metaphor for this person is sick mentally obviously you know i mean you, you don't do something like that if you know all the gears are are turning properly um and then i, I drew the swamp so you know i don't know where he was from but if his mind is that churned up that he's doing such crazy things you know i mean obviously not to say that he's from down here, but who knows? Maybe he is. No, he's um, he's from Florida. Oh, he's from Florida. Well, they have, Florida. They have, they have swamps in Florida too. Lots of them. <laughs> um, so I mean, it, to me, this is just confusion. Is what it's it's what it's representing with a swamp, because you it's very easy to get lost in the swamp. 
because everything looks the same. It's kind of like being out in the middle of the desert. All you see is sand. Everything looks the same. Well, the swamp is the same way. Um, ending with the demon. Um, I mean, I, who knows? Maybe he was possessed by something wanting to make him do crazy stuff. Maybe he thinks he's a demon. And that's why he did it. I, I mean, the fact that he comes up with Biden and Trump are working together, that in and of itself tells me something's not right in the upstairs department because yeah. nothing could be further from the truth. But um, it's really, it's just, it's just sad that somebody does something like this because he's going to pay for this the rest of his life in a very painful way. Uh -huh. You know, I, it, it's yeah. not like something you put a bandaid on and go home. It's yeah, he's thirty. Well, if, if he 30, even survived, right? I mean, you start talking skin grafts and all that kind of stuff. And you have an you have the possibility of pseudomonas setting in and sepsis. It can get bad. I mean, it, burns are nothing to sneer at. No. Well, we've reached uh, that time in the show where it's time for a little ad. So, Ooh, <laughs> yay! Talking about. There we go. Time for a little ad for a new show coming to the Cool Crone. <laughs> Thank you, Sherry. <laughs> okay, so now you that's the little teaser of what's coming up tomorrow night. So, all right, so uh, let's go here. Um, I want to take that one up. Whoops, okay. Uh, what's this? Who, oh, this is kind of an interesting question. Um, and I'll follow it up with the one about Jesse Walt, Walt, Waters. Walters. Waters, whatever. Anyway, who do you feel is doing the best job reporting 45 and other news right now? Mm -hmm. Cards for that. Just have our opinion. I want your opinions too. I'm, I've got my pencil and I'm overachieving by writing them down. Well, um, although I do get a little tired of hearing them because now in my feed, they just come up over and over and over again. I love hearing what Midas Touch has to say about all of the legal proceedings and stuff that's going on. But as far as just reporting the news on Trump right now, I got to say it's a tie for me between Nicole Wallace and Ari Mel Melber. I like them. I, I like, I always look forward to hearing what they have to say. And, um, and I love that they're getting like these retired judges. They're getting sitting judges. They're getting people who never come on TV mm -hmm. to talk about this stuff. And it's just fascinating. Um, and I like the podcast by the lawyers who are all making podcasts now about Trump's cases. So mm -hmm. that's, that's my thing. Go ahead, whoever. So I, I agree with you about um, Nicole Wallace and um, Ari. I, I love that. They're really clean and they bring a lot of detail. And I also, you know, besides Midas Touch, listen to the lawyers like Glenn Kirshner and Brian Tyler Cohen oh, yes. is a great one to catch. And he also has something with Glenn Kirshner. Additionally, mm -hmm. I also watch, um, oh gosh, George yeah, Conway in his new little show. Yep. Yep. So I love to hear what the lawyers say about the legalities and what's really going to happen. Yep. Because then, yeah, I love it. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, I, I haven't really picked apart different broadcasts that, you know, that I, I just sweep through all of them. And for the longest time, all of them were just so much BS. But I like the one with the um, uh, Conway, George Conway. Also, I like the Susan Lynn broadcast. However, I don't think that's a national broadcast that goes out as a news broadcast. <laughs> but I love what Susan Lynn comes up with. But I just read an article before I came on here today that talked about all the good things that Biden has been doing. And I thought, finally. And, and what they were talking about was that, you know, he's helped the economy. He's helped job growth. He's helped make getting people to make more money uh, out their jobs, that the unemployment has stayed so low under 4% for over two years, which hasn't happened since the 60s. So who? I think that was an MSN article, and I don't know who wrote it. I don't really even pay attention to that part of it, but I thought, finally, and what they were talking about was all these people, when they did polls with America, America's like, oh, no, Biden's doing terrible. And Bi and they're just trying to set the record straight that all these things that people believe, and it probably comes from the Trump side of things, that they're just incorrect. And I'm thinking, if you start getting on this now and just repeating it over and over again so people will finally get it, that it is not Biden that has screwed things up and actually the economy being so screwy in the first place was the pandemic and Trump. Trump added to the national debt. Trump did many, made many mistakes and then the, the, the taxing situation and stuff like that. But the fact that the unemployment is down so low and that the major growth we have, how did they word this? We have twice as much growth as any other major rich country without su suffering higher inflation. Mm -hmm. the United, they're talking about the United States. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this is all Biden's uh, magic. You know, he's making all this happen. Yeah. And I got to say, for the last four years, I have had the worst tax returns and I've owed money instead of gotten money back. Mm -hmm. And I have a small business and I work full time. I should be getting a nice, healthy refund. And I couldn't. This year, I got a really healthy refund. Like it almost made up for the last four years. Like it was. So did we? And it's nice to see the refund coming in, right? Because yeah. I, I don't know what Biden did, but all of a sudden, all all the deductions that I used to take yeah. for my house and the and the home office and all of that stuff, all of that stuff, I was able to do again. Yeah. I hadn't been able to do for the last four years. And I I didn't know about any tax changes, but God, I'm sure grateful that it did change. Yeah, made a big change. I think one of the biggest pluses with the tax changes is the fact that they actually have enough people in the IRS now to do the work. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. That's mm -hmm. good. You know, whereas for so long, they were so short-staffed and so overworked that you know, the ones that were really breaking laws and skimming off the top and whatnot were skating through because we just didn't have the manpower in the IRS to look up those people, you know, yeah. and to crack down on them. And I think that when they start cracking down on those that are breaking the rules, it affects for those of us who follow the rules, you know. And I and he's done some other. I know they've done some finagling with the tax code and stuff. I don't understand it. I'm not even going to pretend to understand it. But yeah, we got a really nice return this year too that I wasn't expecting. And and um, as far as who's reporting, well, I don't have TV anymore, so I don't get to watch cable news or anything like that unless there's little clips online and so i kind of get my news and bits and pieces here and there but i've always enjoyed watching ari and i've always enjoyed watching nicole um i would have to say the majority of my knowledge comes from midas touch and the different people that they have um that do their shows through them from current or past lawyers to business owners to, you know, j just straight up journalists that with all their different shows, it's, 
it's nice to not only have somebody telling you what's actually happening, but then explaining it in a way that someone like me without a law degree can understand, mm-hmm. you know, because you, you, unfortunately it got to the point where we would, you'd get lawyers and stuff when you would get them to come on TV and talk, they're talking lawyer speak. And I'm, you know, I would sit there and go, I don't understand a word that you're saying. What does that mean? You know? Um, so I think it, the fact that they have people who are in those positions who can break it down to a level that the average person can understand is what helps. And, um, and yeah, for those people who continue to think that Biden hasn't done anything for them, uh, one of the challenges I've been trying to give out to people is memorize five things that he's done that's helped you out personally since he went into office. And the next time somebody hits you with, well, he hasn't done anything for me, you can tick those things off your finger and say, well, that didn't, gas prices going lower didn't affect you. Medication going much lower didn't affect you, especially for people on Medicare or Medicaid. You know, suddenly they're not paying $2,000 a month for, you know, for their medications. They're paying $50 a month. That can make a big damn difference to somebody, you know. Um, So, yeah, I mean, it's just it's important that those of us on the progressive side need to learn our facts so that when we're hit with the BS, there's a response right then and there. Boom. You know, here's a fact, here's a fact, here's a fact. Um, Colleen, you wanted me to give you the the 10 minute warning, but we have a, like a, a, an eight minute warning. Okay. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Yeah. Sorry, I I went on. (laughs) That's okay. I do have to cut the show show a little bit shorter tonight (laughs) because I have pressing deadlines that I have to meet. Okay. Uh, Gerald, did you talk about the reporting? No, I was listening. Okay. Thank you for checking. All right. Um, Do you have anything to add? You know, I, the only thing I would add is, is look multiple sources, look at people who have differing opinions and then make your own informed decisions. Yeah. Good one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, we'll take that down and then let's see what else do we have? Oh, here's, here's a nice one. And this kind of follows up nicely on the topic we were just discussing. Uh, will Jesse Waters and Fox have any consequences for outing the potential juror that ended up being dismissed? Mm. Inquiring minds want to know. Um, yes, I got death. Oh, I got the wheel of fortune. It feels like there's going to be some money involved with that. And then I have the Knight of Swords. They're going to come in with uh, with Fast and Furious on this because this is a this is a problem. Oh my God! <laughs> Who else is ready? Go ahead. The Pentacles. Go ahead. Too. Oh my God! It's going, I, it's going to cost. I so mirror your cards, Gerald. I was just so excited. <laughs> Here, here they are. Here's you. They're sitting there doing their reporter thing at home. Here's money that comes to the. I don't know if it will go to the court system or the actual people who are outed, but they stepped in poop, and there's going to be money. There's going to be money to be paid because of that poop. Um, yeah, they created a situation that enabled. Um, Trump system to out somebody. It, it's really relegating that system, the Trump system of outing, the whatever voila that would break. They definitely went over the edge, taking a juror, a private juror, and putting them on national TV by calling out their details of where they work, what they do, a whole bunch of things. This isn't right. And there has to be some 
retribution from the law. I don't just don't know what that law that would be. But right. You know, and I, I agree with Gerald and Val, I, but I also think that the judge may just step in. He may not publicly do it because he's sick of all this stuff going public, but he's going to be looking around like, what in the world are you doing? Why are, you know, why now? Yeah. Right in the middle of all this picking jurors and stuff and putting people on the spot. And that's, that's the whole, he's trying to protect the jurors and he can't do it if you've got national news saying well this woman she was going to be on there but she can't do it now because what she got stared down by trump for one thing i i don't know which one it was but anyway no i mean i think the judge is gonna if these people if somebody wants to take this on the judge is going to be right there with them okay i agree what do you got sherry i pulled the tennis staff so this has created a real burden for the jurors, especially the ones who have already been outed and, and are being harassed, you know, because um, it's not just your normal harassing. The, these people on the right, I mean, they, they can cause serious harm. Um, they're scary. To, yeah, they're very scary. Somebody um, in chat earlier mentioned that the judge is looking at removing more of the personal information in in the jurors information. Yes. So I think, you know, it's like, yeah. Well, so it can't, yeah, one of the ones that got outed, she was like a, 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 a NICU nurse or something. And she was the only one in that town that worked. It was like her and one other person. So she said she mm. got home and her friends all said, you're the one on the jury, aren't you? They even, they could figure it out. Yeah. So, she yeah. so she's, the only, she's the only yeah. one so far that's been doxxed though. None of, nobody's ever, nobody has pinpointed the other ones yet. Yeah. But yeah. go ahead, go ahead, Sherry. This is creating a tornado. I mean, just, just a whirlwind of mess. Because people are going to be upset. You, you're going to have people who are not going to want to sit on that jury, even as alternates, for fear of what this could bring on them. Because it's not just themselves, but they have their families, their co-workers, their friends, you know, Cause these other people are crazy. They, they are, are crazy, crazy as they'll come in your house. Yep. They, you know, yeah. You? Um, so I think the judge is going to have them. He's going to show them the door basically, you know, we're y'all are going to have to put a stop to this right now, or we're going to lock you up behind that door. Like something you like know, a cease and desist order or something. Jesse, yeah, Jesse yeah. Waters and Fox and all yeah. of them, they yeah. thought they've had trouble before. Yeah. Keep it up. And they're going to all have to find their butts behind Because aren't the they interfering with the legal system by doing yeah. bidding in that way, by bullying and outing people? Jury yeah. tampering. Thank you. Jury oh, tampering. Right. That is the there it is. federal offense. Right yeah. okay. That is a Gerald, federal did offense. You go? Did you already go, Gerald? I did. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I started. Um, yeah. So this young woman who is, you know, I'm sure very good at her profession, but is scared to death now because of all these threats. I think she's going to be approached by lawyers who want to represent her mm -hmm. probably pro bono because it's going to be a very publicized case. And yep. um, yeah, so the law is going to step, step in. I don't think that the judge will be able to have anything to do with this, honestly. He may, you know, um, I, I don't think he's going to have anything to do with this, but she is going to, um, she's going to uh, press a suit against them for damages, oh, just yeah. like Ruby Freeman, right? It's the yeah. same kind of thing. Yeah. She's going to be able to sue them. And this yeah. is a high powered news outlet or entertainment outlet. And Jesse Waters, you know, I don't know if you guys know this, but he was the uh, water boy for Bill O'Reilly. Oh, yeah. Yes. He learned at the feet of the master, right? And yeah. so he has finally perfected his online snarkiness and just in time for him to be out of a job and sued up the ass. So mm -hmm. you know, yeah. that's, that's what I see happening here. Yeah. 
She's well, and what, I, so what I'm talking about with the judge is that he has been adamant about this thing about the jury. So no. I'm just saying that that's his, that, that's where he's coming from is just, you know, we, he does not want anything to be threatened to the jurors. So if somebody, this woman, if she's been threatened, he is going by his words already, he's backing her up. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And um, so how do we think, uh, this is just my own question here. How do we think he is going to, um, punish or whatever trump about this gag stuff because he has to do something he, yeah. he can't and a thousand dollars for a for a you know slip up is nothing so what do we think he's going to do in order to Next slip up he should he should oh. or he has to pay a million dollar fine but no, I, still, I, I, go ahead val what are you? i was gonna say i i think they're actually going to this time for some reason, again, I think he's going to actually give a final warning and to do the thousand dollar fines. But on your next, you know, outburst with this information, you will be um, held in contempt and 30 days in jail uh, for every count of contempt. Um, this is a formal announcement, even though Glenn Kirshner and the other uh, lawyers think that he's really gotten without saying this is your final warning gotten the final warning well i think this yeah. this judge is going to do it by the letter of the law and say this is your final warning we're going to charge you know you're going to be charged three thousand for all three counts or four thousand whatever but then the next one is 30 days for every count um so that's going to be to whenever they have that Monday. And I understand the judge's reasonings for for not wanting to put Trump in jail to date because that's what Trump wants is for them to put him behind bars so he can raise money on it. Well, and so he can get his his MAGA people to go a little bat so crazy and and start doing shit. So but I think as Val was saying this judge is only going to take it so far. And I think they have pushed him to the edge where it's going to be, okay, this is it. If it happens again, you're, you know, it, it's the slammer for you. And I think that while Trump thinks he wants to go to jail, the minute he gets put in that cell and the door is locked, mm -hmm. he's going to have a real come to Jesus moment, I think, in that yeah. moment. Because there's something very final about the clang of that door. Yeah. And you can't walk out when you decide you're ready to walk out. Right. He may think romantically, oh, my followers, my followers. I don't, I'm just going to tell you up front. I don't see him out there now. I don't, I don't see him out there when he goes to jail. So <laughs> this is just, I don't think it's going to happen. And I also don't know how many of his loyal followers want to end up like the ones in Rikers I don't think they're going to be that dedicated to somebody who says, well, I'll get you, I'll pardon you. No, it doesn't happen. So Gerald's flashing you know. the warning light. I, I want to, uh, Colleen, check your time. Okay. Oh. Thank you. Oh. I'm oh. good. I'm good. Um, I'm just wondering, are there Trump supporters this. outside of the courthouse now? Does he have anybody out there going, go Trump, go Trump? No. He has people, no uh, one is above the law. No one is above the law signs. And he he locked them up. And, yeah, he's, yeah. Got, he's got people against him. Yes, there's I nobody there for him. I don't see any. Uh, Just like there's nobody I mean, at his rallies anymore. A few, there's a few, but there's like, it's like 12 no. people. <laughs> it literally is like 12 people. I just yeah. saw it in the crowd. So what's going to happen is he he really does not get how, just like I think it was Gerald that said, you know, when he goes to prison and he hear, hears the clink who said that, it he is going to have a meltdown. It is really going to hit home and he's not going to be placated. He doesn't even have a phone to go, see see what they did to me? <laughs> you know, I think, I think the judge may do something a little irregular. 
he might just put uh, Trump in a timeout. I was just going to say that. Oh, here's my. Now, own. what's a timeout? Like for like a little kid, just put him in that room, no windows, no phone, no nothing, and just let him sit there for a few hours and stew in his little yeah. potty face. This is this is what I was getting to that before he sends him to jail, which is then Trump can identify that he's being persecuted, right? Yeah. <laughs> that, that he puts him, that he separates him from the rest of the proceedings. Yeah, maybe lets him watch it on video or something, but takes away his phone. And that, that, that will make him yeah. go completely crackers. Yes, because, wouldn't it? Yeah. I don't, I don't even think he'll let him watch something. I think he'll just... No, he no really because he's, he's, he's supposed to be involved in the proceedings. But he's, if he's disruptive to the proceedings, they can remove him from the, court, from the courtroom. Oh, okay. but, if he, but if he removes him and he doesn't let him watch it, then Trump's going to complain that he wasn't yeah. given a fair shake. Well, so if he true. lets him watch it, but has him isolated. He and the CIA, he and the, uh, yeah, his Secret Service guys can all sit in the room and play cards or something while they watch the. And actually, by law, they, a criminal trial by law in New York, uh, you have to allow the defendant to listen. They have to hear it all, even going up to the judge. They have to allow them to hear all yeah. conversations. It's the law. So yeah. even in a timeout, he would have to have earbuds. You, you can you can wear earbuds while you're eating your fast food. You well, can. Amanda, and, Amanda, and he will. Amanda Carroll says uh, put, he'll be put in the naughty chair. <laughs> naughty yeah, chair. No, and I'm just waiting to see all of you really creative people send us some art with just that picture so that we can... <laughs> <laughs> for the next thumbnail for polyterology. Yeah, there you go. I would just love that. There you go. That's a shout out to all of you people who have great art skills. Yes, I'd really <laughs> love to see that. Trump in the naughty chair. Trump <laughs> in the naughty chair. That's definitely what we want to I, see. I just got notification about a port paranormal talk that's coming up. Yeah, it's yeah. coming up in uh, 45 minutes. So I got to skedaddle here. But mm -hmm. thank you, everybody, for playing Polyterology with me. As you know, it's my favorite game to do every other Friday. And um, I thank all of the chatters for the questions, because I certainly wasn't prepared with questions tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but um, thank all of you readers for your wonderful uh, divination. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate all of that. And so with that, I'm going to get ready here to sign off and say sayonara and Thank you, thank you, thank you. So there okay. we go. Bye, everybody. Bye.